Hi guys, I'm Max, this is Sophie, and welcome back to episode... A million. Of our van build. <laughs> uh, this week we are looking at our electric. So last week you will have seen us spec our system and kind of explain how and why we did that. And this week we are waiting for our equipment to arrive and hopefully we can explain our full system to you um, with every component because it's all going to arrive here very, very soon. Chris is on his way to deliver all of our Victron kit. And I'm really excited. We got all our kit from Bespoke Solo because it was really easy to order with Chris. You can see him right here and he can look at the details of your build project and how you plan to use your van and help you select the right components to create the most effective system for you. We also found he's super considerate about getting you the best value options for your project um, as well as designing a system that really fits your specific needs. We'll drop a link to his website in the description. <laughs> so Chris has just delivered all our equipment so let's uh, unbox it and have a look. It's also blue and shiny. So we've just unloaded all of these goodies out of our box. Um, we're gonna get them all out properly, lay them all out and have a look at them in detail. Are you having a nerdgasm? Yeah, a little bit. Can you not wait to read all of the instruction manuals? I've read most of them already online. Nerd. spent ages making this amazing wiring diagram and we're gonna take all our components and lay them out in the schematic and hopefully talk you through each and every step. So this is vaguely what our system is gonna look like. Max is over here drawing some batteries in because we can't lift them onto the table because they're very 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 heavy. Very. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is talk you through sort of each piece what it does and how they all wire into each other and then hopefully you'll understand our system a bit better. So before we get too deep into explaining our system we want to tell you something first and that is our system is a little bit different to most people's systems. Yeah we're going to be running our vehicle leisure system on 24 volt and there's a few different reasons for this. To start with our vehicle system already runs on 24 volt. A lot of HGVs and other big vehicles do run on 24 volt. And the reason for this is that voltage drop exists over a long distance. So because from the front of the back of a bigger van, it's a lot further running on 24 volt instead of 12 volt means there's a lot lower percentage of voltage drop. When you're wiring in 24 volt instead of 12 volt, you can use half the thickness of cables, which is also a great benefit. Is it cheaper for us? Yes. And I'm always in for cheap. <laughs> It's also a no-brainer for us because we can buy the majority of appliances that would normally run on 12 volt to run on 24 volt. So our fridge is going to run on 24 volt, our lights are going to run on 24 volt. So it's been really quite an easy choice for us. And it's also way more efficient when you're inverting power up to 230 volt AC. So these are our batteries. They're big and chunky, but they are the Victron SuperCycle AGM batteries. Now these are fantastic for us because they're recommended for a discharge of about 60 to 80% and you can actually fully discharge these nearly 300 times. Now we hope that doesn't happen to us, but it's nice having that sort of safety net in case something goes a bit wrong. So they're pretty big. They weigh 45 kilograms, which is roughly the same as a chimpanzee. <laughs> and we've got four of these. It's, I guess it's a really good job this is a big van. <laughs> We've gone for four of these and we've gone for the 170 amp hour version. We're gonna wire them in series parallel, which means we're gonna get 24 volts at 340 amp hours. And we're, we're actually spreading them out, which is what I'm trying to do here. Um, we've gone for two here behind our seat box and two in uh, the passenger seat box. Um, they're so heavy, so we are gonna try and balance out the weight a bit. So what does 340 amp hour of 24 volt actually mean? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> That's 8,160 watt hours of power. Power? What, and what does that mean? <laughs> so from all our calculations, this battery bank setup will allow us to run for two and a half full days without any kind of like input from either solar or electric hookup or from the alternator of the van charging the batteries at all. So all that power would actually allow us to run one of our puck lights for over 120 days. So that gives you an idea of how much that actually is. So we're wearing these batteries in series parallel, which means our 12 volt add 12 volt equals 24 volts. And the same here, 
And because each one's 170 amp hours, you add that up and we have 24 volt at 340 amp hour. So the next piece of our system is our battery balancer, which we need because we've got banks of batteries that are wired in series. When you have those two batteries, they can be charged unequally. So what this does is it senses a difference between the batteries and pumps the higher power into the lower power to try and equal them out. This is also a little bit exaggerated because we have one bank of batteries here um, and the other one on the other side under our seats. And this battery balancer is gonna sit on this panel behind the driver's seat. This is where we're also gonna put the majority of our Vitron equipment attached to the back of this sofa, seat, bed, chair, whatever you want it to be. It's a little bit of everything. So we're gonna see how this fits in our system with our batteries. So if I put it there, the uh, zero volt common point connects to the negative of the two sets of batteries. There's a common which connects and joins the two midpoints on both banks of batteries. And then there's a 24 volt point which connects to the live side of the two banks of batteries. It also has some reset and alarm options, but we're not going to be using them. We'll have a little set of MIDI fuses um, before we go to any other appliances from our batteries. And we're also going to have an isolator switch. But they haven't arrived yet. So uh, you've got to put up my pretty drawings for now. There's going to be actually five of them, so I've not put much space in there. But that's basically going to run down from our 24 volts from our batteries. Um, it's going to have a mega fuse up at the top from the batteries to protect everything past that. We're then gonna have a, a on and off switch to be able to isolate the whole system if we want. And then we're gonna come into this MIDI fuse box. From that, we're gonna go out to our first thing, which is one of our MPPT chargers, which is up here. We've gone for the Victron Smart Solar MPPT, which is super clever and has a multi-stage adaptive charge program. So it reads what your batteries needs and gives them that power. We've gone for two because we have two different sets of solar panels on the roof that we're gonna show you next. And they are the most efficient way of using that power. So our two MPPTs are gonna be mounted in the same place behind the driver's seat on the back of this panel. The cables for the solar panels are then gonna run up and through the roof up to the roof rack in a nice waterproof seal that I've not yet put in. So each of those MPPTs is gonna be fused from the main battery bank um, and also earthed back to the battery bank, but we're gonna look at the cabling for that in a bit. And then we have those two sets of leads that are gonna go up onto the roof to our solar panels. So we've gone for our Victron mono solar panels. Um, we've gone for those because they work really, really well in low light. Um, they're big and we obviously have a lot of space to fill. Um, but actually, when it comes down to it, we needed something that would fit in the spaces that we have left on our roof. And those ones fit perfectly. So that's what we've come for. So the Victor and Mono ones that actually fit our van perfectly are the 175 watt panels. We've actually gone for five of them. We do have quite a large space up here. And they are this big. If you can see this. This is how tall they are in real life. And we have five of these bad boys, so they are gonna lay down on our roof and give us all the power we could ever need. So we're actually gonna be putting two solar panels at the back here. We are wiring those in series. And if you swing around over here, we're gonna have three at the front, kind of right at the front and down the side of that big window. Window? Skylight? Roof window. <laughs> Roof window. We're going to have three up here in the front um, and those are going to be in their own little series as well. Look how tiny you look. Hello! Right, uh, I put the ladder over there. <laughs> Let me down! See ya! <laughs> See you tomorrow, yeah? Bye! She thinks I'm joking. So after all that effort and getting up on the roof, I can't actually draw these onto our system because they go up there somewhere. So, great. 
The next component in our system is our DC to DC charger. It is this little component here, and we're gonna. What are we gonna do? Oh, From am the I mini drawing, fuse. Am I drawing the connection? You have been given full permission <laughs> to draw with a sharpie <laughs> on my piece of paper. Cool. And our you... sorry, our piece of paper, and it darling. It goes into this one, doesn't it? It goes into the output. Positive. positive yeah okay so this is our dc to dc charger and i am actually drawing this on here okay here we go oh not there shut up he's definitely there <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna go explain what this does in the van so it's a fully programmable three-stage charger which has engine on detection what that means is when the engine is detected to be on and the voltage in the vehicle batteries goes up it switches itself on and starts charging the leisure batteries off of the vehicle batteries and alternator. It's a 24 to 24 volt, because that's what our vehicle and leisure system is. It's a 17 amp charger, which means all the time it's on, every hour we're driving, 17 amps of charge goes from the vehicle into the leisure system. It's a bit of a bigger unit compared to the others, but once again, we are mounting it back there behind our driver's seat. And the input comes from our vehicle batteries that are under the driver's seat box in Avario and the output's going to connect to our ledger system. So that's going to go probably there somewhere. Normal batteries, ledger batteries, DC to DC charger. More ledger batteries over there. They're, they're hiding <laughs> in this other seat box. <laughs> so we have our vehicle batteries. And the positive from that and the negative. So the negative connects to the negative of the input and the positive connects to the positive and then the positive of the output goes in through a midi fuse and into our batteries and the negative connects to our leisure battery negative system that's that what's next Next in the system is our Victron Multi Plus. Now, this is a magical box full of wonderful things. It does an awful lot of stuff in our system. Firstly, it houses our inverter, and it's a 1200 watt inverter, which means we can plug in a good amount of stuff. And that takes our 24 volt from our leisure batteries down to 230 volt, which will output in our plug sockets. Probably gonna put that one about there. The Multi Plus is also a battery charger. So when we're plugged into shore power, um, it can turn our 230 volt into 24 volt to charge our leisure batteries. It is a 25 amp charger. So for every hour we are charging, it can put 25 amps into our leisure batteries. But it also has a secondary charger, which can go into our vehicle batteries. It's a bit smaller. What, what size is it? Four amp. So it's only four amps, but it is every little helps. And it means our, like our starter, Batteries aren't gonna deplete. When we're on hookup. When we're on hookup. So the Multi Plus has a really clever built in thing called power assist, which means if our hookup isn't enough power to power our 230 volt loads in the van, it can also combine the shore power with power from the inverter off our ledger batteries to kind of share the load. It's really clever. Um, something else we've uh, gone for alongside our Multi Plus is a multi control. Yeah, Victron Multi-Control, which is just like a little remote screen for this, which lets you turn it on and off or set it to charger only instead of inverter. It gives you all the stakes the charger's in, um, as well as in the when the inverter's on and a few error codes for like low battery or overload or temperature. It also lets you set the incoming current limit. So if you're plugged into a house, you can dial it down to 13 amps if you know you've got that much power. If you're on a campsite or on a generator and can go up to 16 amps, you can control with like a digital kind of gate almost how much it's going to pull through. So that's exciting. You look so excited. So excited. So although it does prefer to be mounted upright, the manual says we can lay it horizontally. So we're going to mount it in our seat box here. It's like the last bit of space we have left um, and it's right next to the batteries. So it is going to be the perfect position to have this in. So the Multi Plus is wired up to quite a lot of different elements in our system. So we have the battery hookup over to our midi fuses that everything else is connected to and the negative will run down into the rest of the negative for the ledger system we then have our shore hookup point which is going to be on kind of household flex uh three core cable which is a live neutral on earth rather than a, a 
just a positive and negative. Then I have the power going out to our sockets. And then we also have a, uh, it's kind of ethernet cable, I think, coming down to the multi-control panel as well. So the next thing in our system is our smart battery protect. This is um, the last thing that comes out of our MIDI fuse um, and everything, all the loads that we are running, run through this bad boy. And basically it is protecting our batteries from completely discharging. It also has over voltage protection, which I've got no clue what that means, but I'm sure Max will explain that. It means if the voltage coming from the batteries is too high, it, it stops before it blows up all of our appliances. So it's a very useful bit of kit. <laughs> So this battery protect is also going to live on this big electrics panel on the back of our chairs. It is near the batteries, so it'll make wiring up a lot easier. This battery protect is the last thing that comes out of our MIDI fuse. comes in here, and everything that is coming out of it is going to our loads. So let's have a look at these. So first of all, we'll have 24 volt loads. So that will come out the smart battery protect and will go into a blade fuse box. And from that, yeah, we'll have all our 24 loads, which are all of our USB sockets around the van, some USB sockets in high up cupboards for our router and for our projector, our LED lighting, our under counter lighting, bathroom lighting, garage lighting, water gauges, and our fridge. We also are going to run some loads on 12 volts. So for that, we need to run back from our smart battery protecting 24 volt to a DC to DC converter, which changes 24 volts to 12 volts. Obviously it loses a bit of efficiency there. I think they're meant to be 88% efficient. Um, and then from that, we're gonna to run to another little blade fuse box from which we're gonna run. All our 12 volt stuff. Our gas tank solenoid, our cigarette sockets, our roof vents, our water pumps, and our oven ignition. So from that shunt, we have 24 feeding the 24 volt fuse box. We then also have 24 volts feeding the DC to DC converter, which outputs 12 volts, which will go into our 12 volt fuse box. That will all then also, I've lost my black Sharpie, uh, that gets its negative into the DC to DC converter. The negative of that joins up to the negatives of everything else, as does the negative out of the 24 volt fuse box. So let's look at where all of those negatives for the whole system go. So the negatives from all over our system all run back towards where our batteries are. But before they go through the batteries, they're gonna go through this, which is a Victron Smart Shunt. It's an all-in-one battery monitor that gives us loads of data, like a state of charge for the batteries, how long we have to go on the batteries till we get run out, and also gives us lots of historic data so we can see where our usage is. So, as I mentioned, all of the negatives from all across the system all come back and go into this on the system minus, and then the battery minus goes up and connects back to our leisure battery bank. The last piece of our system is this, which is our servo. It links to um, a couple of the appliances here. It links to our shunt, our MPPTs, and the MultiPlus. And it basically gives us feedback on data on how those are performing. Um, what's great about this one is that it can connect to the Wi-Fi, so we get to have that information live on our phone, in the van, but also anywhere in the world if we're not with the van. It also does loads of other really cool geeky stuff like tank inputs, temperature inputs, digital inputs. You can run relays from it, you can have a monitor screen on it, but we're going to save all that for once we're traveling if we want to make any add-ons. Ta-da! Ta <laughs> so that is our system in its entirety, we think. <laughs> Fingers crossed, touch wood. We hope it was clear for you guys and you can understand why we chose to run a 24 volt and, and how it works with the Vario and hopefully it was useful for some of you. No one needs to do is wire it all up. Yeah, we've got all your electrical tape. So. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> and that is where we're going to leave the video this week. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments. Um, we will try and answer as many as possible. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing because it makes our week. Right, we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.